Starting today, J.P. Morgan Chase will no longer allow brokerage clients to buy or short cannabis-related securities unless they're listed on the NASDAQ, the New York Stock Exchange, or the Toronto Stock Exchange. NASDAQ, NYSE, and Toronto Stock Exchange only list cannabis names that do not cultivate or sell marijuana in the U.S., as it is still illegal under U.S. federal law. Reuters is reporting this all, and J.P. Morgan's move is aimed at mitigating marijuana-related risk. Now, while this sounds like it could have burned the marijuana market, Look at cannabis company stock right now. The ones that do fit into J.P. Morgan's new rule are getting higher on this first day of implementation. And one of the largest cannabis companies in the world may stand to benefit the most. Tilray shares jumping 16 percent right now. They trade on both the Toronto Stock Exchange and the Nasdaq. What does J.P. Morgan's new edict mean for the future of weed stocks? Let's get to Tilray CEO Erwin Simon joining us in a Fox Business exclusive. Uh, well, the shareholders seem to know what it means. They're banging the buy button on, on names that fit the rule, including yours. But tell us how you view J.P. Morgan's missive to its prime brokerage clients that Reuters is reporting. Uh, good afternoon, Liz, and great to see you. Listen, I, I think they made a decision. If you do not trade on NASDAQ, you don't trade on NYSE, you don't trade on, you know, the Toronto Stock Exchange, we're not going to hold your stock and we're not going to trade it because, you know, it's not federally legal to, you know, sell cannabis in the U.S. We're hoping that changes. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that J.P. Morgan knows something. They're trying to force the Safe Bank Act. But, you know, it's major. But listen, there's Tilray to buy. There's Cronus. There's Canopy. There's a lot of good Canadian LP stocks out there that buy that don't touch the plant in the U.S. Yeah, you know, we've got some of the names that, that don't fit into this parameter here. Cura Leaf, True... True Leave, uh, Green True Thumb, uh, yeah. Terrasen. AYR, there's, yeah. and there are a lot of great companies also, mm -hmm. but, you know, they just don't fit into trading on the NASDAQ or, you know, the Toronto Stock Exchange or NYSE. In the bigger scheme of things, Erwin, what does J.P. Morgan taking this step mean for the legitimacy of cannabis stocks? Because, you know, it has been a long road. It's much more of a marathon versus a sprint in getting you guys to be able to go full-blown into the capitalist world. But what does this move really do for the industry, in your opinion? Listen, I think here's the thing. The cannabis world is a real world. It's a $100 billion industry. You know, Canada today is really the only country where it's legal federally. In Europe, where we have a big operation, it's legal from a medical standpoint. I do believe you're going to see Germany legalized shortly, and you'll see a lot of European countries start to legalize from an adult use. You know, the, the problem is, is bringing in the institutional shareholders and bringing in, you know, shareholders that want to hold for a long time. And that's the only issue with it is when a bank like J.P. Morgan, who's one of the largest banks in the world, is going to say, we're not going to hold your stock, we're not going to trade your stock. And listen, there's plenty of stocks out there to buy, so why should I hold a cannabis stock? Um, the opportunity for a Tilray is this year, as we build out our platform, and I came out in July of this year, said how I want to build a $4 billion consumer packaged goods business in the cannabis world. Right. Now, to get to that $4 billion, Liz, I need legalization in the U.S. So is it forcing the hand that J.P. Morgan saying, hey, we don't want to be in this business if it's not legal? On the other hand, what I have to do with Tilray if it's not going to legalize in the U.S., what are the other opportunities for Tilray in adjacency categories that when legalization does happen, it's going to benefit my shareholders and going to benefit our company? Well, I'm interested to know how much you're working with lobbyists. And, and I say this because you've got all different groups in Washington, D.C., either against this or for this. And there is that news that there is a Republican-led marijuana legalization plan that's that's starting to formulate do you work with lawmakers at this point so we all work with lobbyists and here's the interesting thing which i you know laugh at is biden's looking for ways to cover tax and how to go out there and you know with his infrastructure and he wants to have Pay a billionaire it. tax what yeah wants a capital gains legalize cannabis liz you live in new york walk down the streets you smell it everywhere. It's legal there today, but it's not being sold through legalized outlets today. That's all tax dollars that is, you know, just left on the away. Table. Yeah. Uh, so 
with uh, legalize cannabis both from adult use, from medical, bring in these social communities and fund a lot of these programs, decriminalize and let's get it right because right now people are confused. I get asked every day, well, can't you sell in New York? Can't you sell in the U.S.? And that's what we need to do because it is, it is so, you know, basically confusing out there. What's legal? What's not legal? Why can't I buy it? Why are these companies selling? There is a lot of tax dollars that are just dripping away on cannabis today that's yeah. being sold. And well, we're looking at ways to plug holes. Yeah, very similar to, uh, you know, online gambling. But a as we wrap up, I know that you partnered with Anheuser-Busch to come up with drinks and things like that. Talk to me about what we can expect in the future from your company. See, listen, I'm really excited about the whole spirits and beverage business. If you come back and look at one of the bigger opportunities, you know, two weeks ago, I was at Parents Weekend at USC. And, you know, what are kids doing today? They're enjoying drinks, low calorie drinks, alcohol drinks, and they're, you know, indulging in cannabis products. And with that, that is a big part of the future. And I think what's going to happen, whether it's vodkas and bourbons, you're going to see them infused with THC, not alcohol and THC together. You know, in regards to edibles, the same thing. It's going to be THC edibles. And that's ultimately mm -hmm. from a relaxation. The other big opportunity, Liz, and I'm all over it, is from a medical standpoint. The consumer today wants cannabis today for sleep, for anxiety, for pain. Mm -hmm. And that is something that, again, I'm pushing to get, you know, into prescriptions where medical plans will pay for this here. And it's a big, big opportunity wow. out there. Well, we'll be we'll be watching it, Erwin. I just don't want a nation of zombies. OK, that's all I care about. I I'm for medical marijuana. I feel like as I hear all of this, it is a story that I want to continue to follow with you. And and I feel better knowing you're in charge because I know you for 20 years. So keep it safe, well, my friend. I agree. I agree with you on zombies. But that's the whole thing. We got to educate the consumer in regards to safety. No different than alcohol. And, you know, there's, which is there's legal, again, right. yeah. which, is, which is legal. Certain age, though. Uh, Irwin, great to see you. Irwin Simon of Tilray, which is getting a very significant bump at this hour in this final uh, 31 minutes of